Yeah. Well, first, hey, thanks for coming on, man. Do appreciate you uh, Pleasure. stepping up. Hopefully we can uh, help some people out with this and uh, so. share some love and encouragement in this crazy time. Sounds good, man. All right, let's go a little <clears throat> bit more volume on my end. And all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. And welcome to our latest edition of the Small Business Spotlight. Today, instead of really highlighting uh, what some of our small businesses have to offer, we're bringing in a special guest, Mr. Matt Gagnon. He is a TEDx keynote speaker. He is a executive coach, live coach. Uh, he lives with a courageous heart, and I'll let him explain what that means. And uh, just all around good guy. So, <clears throat> first of all, thank you for joining us today, Matt, and welcome. Pleasure to be here, man. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, super excited to have you on. We uh, we actually met back in December at a LinkedIn Local uh, Houston event. Yeah, that's uh, right. Shout out to Tracy and uh, and that group for setting that up. So. Really enjoyed uh, enjoyed you there, and the, just the transparency that you speak from. It, I think it'll be uh, really helpful to a lot of our people in this time. All right, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, how's your week going so far? Week's going really well. I can't believe it's uh, it's Friday already. Uh, good Friday. Every, Happy Good every, Friday. Every, it's Good Friday. That's right. Happy Good Friday. And uh, every day feels the same right now so i'm keeping hash marks on my wall like i'm in castaway with this pandemic thing um but it's been a very interesting actually it's been a challenging week at times because one i'm separated from my family during this whole experience yeah. um and my dog passed away two days ago and so uh that was that was really really hard um, Sorry to hear that. Oh, thank you man and uh but other than that i'm seeing a lot of light uh, right now, like I'm feeling way more engaged because, you know, caring for an elderly dog alone for the past few weeks, past month was just it was really hard, and he mm. was just suffering to the point. Now I just feel this immense relief. Uh, my heart's at peace, knowing that he's uh, he's not hurting anymore. And so, uh, but yeah, no, today's a good day, getting back in the game, exercising, eating healthy. So I'm feeling really good. Yeah, speaking of that, I think this is the first time I've seen you lately without your vest on. <laughs> now my weighted vest on yeah that's right man i did a linkedin live wearing that thing once but um yeah no that's right so, so tell tell me a little bit backstory about that vest yeah well i had used it for a while and i've used it for workouts in the past but um it's a 60 pound weighted vest and uh it's got these little guys in it mm. each one of these weighs two and a half pounds and so i had this you know, every client I work with, one of their limiting beliefs or that fuels their limiting beliefs is shame. Right. You know, uh, you know, I can't do that because, you know, I was really careless with money in my past and I, I can't, can't take a risk anymore, you know, uh, or any kind of failure, whatever it is, it's some kind of shame and, uh, people bury it. They just push it down. And I believe that shame has a weight to it. And it can, it can just push you down into the ground. It holds you back in life. So I was like, man, I want to physically show what the weight of shame looks like. Mm. And so I put the vest on and 24 of these things start to add up. You know, they get heavy. This guy's not that bad. I could launch this thing. But uh, you put 60 pounds of these things on you, you will feel it. So every workout, I'm still finishing this thing. It's dragged on forever. Um, but every time I'd work out, I would take one brick out and I would name it something, a shame that I've either overcome in life, use it as an example, or one that I'm working through. And, uh, and I would let that show up naturally for me. And I would do my workout with this thing on. I'll tell you what, the first time I did it was 60 pounds. Like I've done workouts in that before, but like after a while, like it feels heavy, but after a while you start like leaning over, you know, you put your hands on your quads and you just start, your shoulders start to hurt. It's hard to get up off the ground. You know, you, you, you hang your head and stuff because you're tired. And exa it's, it's exactly what you do and you're kind of depressed and feeling ashamed of yourself. Mm. You know, it's hard to keep your head up. It's hard to get up when you get knocked down. So mm -hmm. every time I take another brick out, another brick and another brick, and you start feeling lighter and lighter and lighter. So yeah, the whole thing was about to teach people the weight of shame, but also um, 
that you don't have to wear a weighted vest to feel better, but you find a way to get closure on it. And that, how does it serve the world for you to have a life sentence for a mistake that you made in life? Like, there's just nothing, like, if you don't learn anything out of what you did in life, then it's just, what a worthless experience. And that's just, that's a quitter's mentality, you know, to have, is to just let something like that be a life sentence. So yeah, I'm hoping that this, uh, this campaign serves people. I appreciate that. So a lot of times when people start thinking about their shame, think about their guilt, and they get around people that look like they have it all together, there, there's one of two things that typically happen. They're either feeling extremely discouraged because they're not looking at themselves as in, in the light that they were created for, or uh, they get really encouraged by other successes and overcoming that other people do. And just first and foremost, that's one of the reasons why I'm such a big fan of yours. Uh, because I love seeing the transparency and and the encouragement that you bring by showing, hey, I don't have it all together. I'm better than where I was, but I'm not yet where I want to be. So so thank you for living that out. I, I try to thank you thank for living you. transparently as much as I can. Appreciate that. Definitely appreciate that. Uh, <clears throat> so as a profession, I guess you would say uh, you're doing a lot of executive coaching, things like that. What it, can you can you enlighten uh, our audience? Is typically small business folks and and things like that. Can you just give them a little taste of what that's like? Yeah, um, you, do you know, it's executive? uh, it's uh, executives are like really elite entrepreneurs, high performing entrepreneurs with, you know, right. um, you know, proven results. You know, is is really the big thing. And these are people, you know, C-suites and and high-performing entrepreneurs. These are people that have been super high-performing for a long time. And they've had great careers, but their career has been pretty much the only thing that defines who they are. Right. As long as work is going well, they feel amazing. They feel on top of the world. Um, But the other thing, too, is they're missing out on so much in life. And they start to feel like they're not enough. Like their family's always like, you're never present, you're never here. Um, When they're at work, you know, sometimes if they're spending more time with family they're like your work is like you're not doing enough you're not you know you're not present it's the same kind of thing and you're getting pulled all your friends are telling you you're always bailing on us and it's just like man that high you used to get from your career isn't isn't working anymore you don't get that buzz and so people come to me and i help them one figure out what their limiting beliefs are Mm. and then two help them rediscover their values in life so that way they can start designing a lifestyle and then building a career around that Okay. Sometimes it's not even about changing careers. Sometimes it's changing your relationship with your career because you have no boundaries and you're just fueled by limiting beliefs. It's amazing how many people can be successful in this world while still have crippling limiting beliefs. So can you give us an example of that? Get rid of it. Oh yeah. Uh, one of the biggest ones I always hear is like, what if people find out I don't know what I'm doing? <laughs> like, I think I've heard every person like always say, man, I don't know Guilty. what I'm doing and I hope no one finds out. Um, you know, that's a big one. The other one is I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time to do that. It's bullshit. Um, if, when people say I can't find the time, I'm like, if you're trying to find time, good luck. You're going to keep looking. You got to be willing to create time. So the whole time thing is, is just you're not willing to create time for your transformation. The last thing is, I'll tell you, is that a lot of people have not invested in themselves before. They'd okay. rather spend 600 bucks a month on a car payment than put any money into themselves. You know, like, oh, that seems crazy. That seems crazy. Why would I pay you all this money? That's outrageous. And I'm like, look, if I help you overcome the one thing you've spent two decades on, what's that worth to you? Rawr. Sorry. So much. Okay. I couldn't <laughs> but, tell know, the difference for a second. All right. But that's the big thing, though. It's just like, If I help you overcome that one thing that you've spent many years trying to overcome, then what's that really worth to you? And so that's, that's where it kind of kicks in a little bit. So I love working with these people. They're really thinking about legacy now and they want something different in life. They're ready to surrender that control. Now, when you say now, is that pre COVID-19 quarantine shut in or is that current COVID-19 quarantine shut in? Old man. It's okay. both. Like this is still an eye opener for people too. They're like, right. man, like, what do I? I'm home all the time now. That's the thing. They're like, I'm home all the time now, and I'm realizing what I've missed. You know, and when things end, I don't want to go back to the way it used to be. 
Okay. You know, or it's now it's about creating boundaries. It's just like, I didn't think mm. I could work from home. Now it's like, Oh, kind of figuring it out now. Like this whole thing sucks, but uh, I have kind of enjoyed a little bit watching people adjust to working from home. Cause I'm like, mm. I've been doing this for five years. This is easy. Um, and so, yeah, there's all these new things, but it's been very big eye opener, but the type of clients that I work with though, because they're such, you know, amazing performers, this whole experience for them, they have such a, an incredible mindset that they're just like, okay, I'm just going to adjust right now. This is scary. This is challenging, but I know I have like probably three to six months of runway here and I need to take decisive action during it, you know? And they're also acknowledging the breakthroughs that they're having too. So I really appreciate that. They're still very uh, coachable and they're not coming from a place of desperation. That's good. Uh, so right now, small businesses are suffering just as much as just about anybody. Uh, so these, these small business owners, the people that are really putting themselves out there, they, they have a little bit of forced time to kind of reset. If you had a suggestion for them to really start with, to, to get their uh, focus on track, get their drive, re-engage that relationship with their business mm-hmm. that you're referring to, uh, what would that be? You know, look, get creative. It's not business as usual. Mm. Like this is a big eye opening event right now. And a lot of businesses are closing because they're just comfortable and complacent, Mm. you know? So now that it's time to do something different, they haven't been open-minded to that. Some of, I can't judge everybody on that, but look, if you're going to want to thrive through this, you have to be able to think outside the box. Mm. Like I love the businesses that are kind of selling, like they're selling gift cards at a discount for when they reopen. You know, and some of those things are tax write-offs. I think it's brilliant. Get your, get your community involved to save your business by investing in it. You know, mm-hmm. that's great. We know this is temporary. We just don't know when. Delivery right. service, awesome. You know, dr- every, Drew and drive throughs it's great. Uh, local cigar shop here. They're like, nope, call in your order. We'll have it for you ready outside. I'm like, brilliant. You know, there's all these types of different things that you could do to try and get creative. Um, like what, one company switched to now selling groceries, you know, like, cause that's what people need and they're delivering that instead. So people are getting creative and that's, that's what you got to do. And you got to involve your community. So that's going to be another thing. If you haven't focused on your community development, if you haven't focused on being a part of that, if you haven't like elevated your customer service over the years, you know, it's, it's, it's really going to hurt you. Great. Great. So <clears throat> Have there been any real surprises to you in this whole uh, either 2020 period before the shutdown, during this lock-in, whatever you want to call it? Has there been any businesses or actions that have really surprised you in a good way and thought, man, I wish I thought of that? Or, or possibly other people need to adopt this mentality or this, uh, this idea? You know, um, I will tell you that one of the things that was the biggest eye-opener for me was a conference I went to in February out in Banff, Canada. It was called the Cult Gathering, which is a weird name, I know. It is. But uh, it's, a play, it's a play on words. Okay. And uh, it's about going there for three days and listening to some of the most influential like leaders, executives, chief marketing officers um, for some of the biggest brands on the planet that have cult-like followings, mm. you know, like Under Armour. Under Armour fans, they follow that place like a cult. Like they are diehards and I work for Under Armour. I get it. You know, so we had Under Armour there. We had Coca-Cola there. We had Skittles, Doritos, the Philadelphia 76ers, the Globetrotters, Spotify, Sam's Club, Tim Hortons. Like that's just some of them, you know, and they're all there telling intimate stories about themselves as leaders and then how they've created amazing cultures, Mm. amazing cultures. ESPN was another great one. I mean, they all shared like when their companies were not healthy, when they were underperforming and what did they do to adjust and get back in the game. That was probably one of the best investments I've ever done in watching how these people every day, each one of these CMOs are amazing because every idea they have is usually a, I could get fired over this right? or I could be the greatest thing ever. Like, and that's every single one of them was like that. Like, I think the person from Skittles was like almost fired like eight times, you know, and, um, you know, the, uh, the CMO of uh, Coca-Cola, like Jeff, that guy, unreal. I love this guy. 
he had to pitch the idea of relaunching Coke 2, like new Coke. Right. He had to relaunch new Coke to the CEO, like the biggest skeleton in Coke's history, you know, for Stranger's Things, Stranger Things season three. And it just talked about like standing on the hill, willing to die, you yeah. know? And it's that, like, I love that. It taught me about the value of risk, that if you're willing to fail, you're willing to succeed. Mm. And so I saw a portfolio of businesses, not to mention the people who run the gathering, who've developed Forbes' number one must-attend event mm. out there. You know, like Ryan Gill and his team, man, Chris Nealon, like, holy cow, culture is everything. Very that's good. it, man. That's, that's my big takeaway. Just like, I'm like, I want to do this thing right. And I also want to surround myself with all stars. That's there what I go. need to do. So okay. you need to be around people or the caliber um, that you aspire to be or that you are. And they're either further ahead of the game or they're right behind you. So you can mentor them. But you got to surround yourself with all stars and going to events like that. That's it, man. Huge. That's nice. The, the one thing I heard you say that you didn't really focus on too much was, um, these guys aren't, aren't scared to polarize their, their audience. They're not scared to uh, do something that's going to put you either way over here or yeah. way over here. Uh, they, they just don't want to be stuck in this medio mediocrity where so many yeah. people just love to kind of sit because they think it's safe. Yeah. No, With none a little of these bit people of risk, did safe things. Long way. Yeah. None of them did safe stuff. You know, again, pitching new Coke, you know, that was crazy, but it ended up breaking the internet. Like it yeah. was huge, you know, Skittles was probably one of the biggest ones where they were like, yeah, they had one thing that was a massive hit. Like, have you ever seen the one where the guy's milking a giraffe and Skittles are coming yes. out of it and stuff? That's their biggest hit. You wouldn't yeah. be, you know, they, their big thing was like, you don't know how many emails we got that you can't milk a giraffe. Like, you know, they don't have udders. And like, it was just like, we know, but that's what sold, you know? And then they told us about a commercial that was so horrendous. Like it, it literally almost got everybody fired, you know, but I love those stories, you know, we're yeah. going to put it all on the line and you got to be polarized. You got to, I do the same thing though with my social media and I don't try and like push buttons, but I am confident about my value system and I'm willing to talk about things so people can say yes or no to it. Like, yes, that guy speaking my language. That's my dude. Like that's the guy I'm going to hang with. Or mm. now nah, I don't dig that at all. Like he bugs me. I think he's an arrogant prick. You know, his vulnerability is, looks weak. I'm like, that's great. I'm not saying you're better than me. I'm better than you, but you're not my person and I'm not yours. Right. So move on. You got to know who your people are. Indeed. So why don't you share a little bit about your inner circle? What kind of people do you, you, you said you surround yourself with all stars, but uh, what, not just professional all-stars, but what kind of qualities do you look like in your core group of guys that you really, really lean on? I'll tell you this right now. The first thing is this, like all-stars are like a value system for me. It's all perspective. And that does not have anything to do with their net worth. Right, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you that. It has nothing to do with their net worth or what kind of house or car they have. It has to do with their value system. Are these good people that you know, uh, I align with? the people I want to spend every day with. There are also people that will call me out on my shit. Like they are fearless about calling me out. Um, they ask me the tough questions, you know, and uh, they don't want to talk about the weather. They're not here to talk about the weather or just talk about sports. They want to have conversations that mean something. They'll be like, you know, what's the story you're not telling me right now? You know, if I say, no, nah, I'm doing good. They're like, no, nah, it doesn't sound like it. What are you really feeling? Like they call you out. They are the type of people where the relationship will stay alive if you don't call them. You're not always the one calling them. They'll call you too. They'll check in. Hey, you doing all right? I haven't heard from you in a while. What's going on? You know, um, they're the type of people, <laughs> this is the analogy I use. I heard a long, long time ago. There are two types of friends. There are the ones that will help you move into a new house. And then there are the ones that will help you move a body. Mm. Those are the people I want. Luckily, I've never had to make that call. But, you know, they're the type of people, though, that will human support body. you. Yeah. They'll support you and help you even if they don't understand. They'll still be there for you. They won't judge. They won't try and fix you, but they'll still be there. So I like people with this like really incredible mindset, you know, and they are big thinkers. They know how to dream big. They know how to take risks. They're willing to fail in life and they're also willing to serve others. 
Okay. So you, you just mentioned two big things there, A, willing to take risks and willing to serve others. Can you give us a couple examples of uh, some of the areas where you've taken risks, can be recent, can be in your past, or uh, ways that you're trying to utilize anything you can right now to serve others? So two parts. Yep. Pretty easy for me there. Um, the biggest risk I ever took was starting this business, mm. like becoming a full-time coach. Um, that was April 10th, 2015. And uh, I was about to go on short-term disability after being diagnosed with narcolepsy, Addison's disease, cataplexy, low thyroid, low testosterone, ADHD, traumatic brain injury, you know, just a few things. So um, just some incurable things, some of those. But, uh, you know, I had a list of excuses. And I had a list of excuses that I, you know, could have easily taken me down. Crippling depression barely enough energy to brush my teeth some days, lost everything, you know, lost that six figure salary, had a toddler. Uh, my wife's out of work, had a beautiful home just built. Uh, so the biggest risk I took was, um, going on medical leave, taking care of myself and then building a business while I had an overdrafted bank account and all those other things. That was a pretty big risk. Um, one that paid off tremendously. So it took a big risk to do that. Okay. So you, you said it paid off tremendously. Uh, just tell us how, what do you mean by that? Well, from a business perspective, I'll tell you right. this. Last year was the best year of my professional career. Mm, good. Like not counting coaching, all of it. Co mm. Counting coaching and my 15 years in retail. You know, the best year I've ever had. Like I've been lucky that over the five years of my coaching business, I've had double, like I've had double, triple and quadruple comps over the prior year. Mm. Like it has been huge wow. and I've been able to do it by even working, you know, with less clients sometimes. Yeah. So I've gotten more efficient at the business too. Um, there's still a lot of room for improvement and a lot mm. of things I need to do in order to scale. But that part was massive for me. Like it was great. And the biggest thing too is being able to build a lifestyle first and then build a business around it okay. versus the other way around. And I stopped doing the whole hustle and grind thing. There is a time for that. There's a time to sprint, but sprinting is not meant to be a marathon. You can't do that, you know? And I had already done that part of the game in my 20s. So this time I learned to be very strategic about when I sprint, you know, mm -hmm. when I hustle and grind. Other than that, I need to know when to sleep. I need to eat right. I need to work out. I need to have a good prayer life or meditation. And I need to make time to be around my inner circle too. Mm. If I don't create time for that, then I'm creating time to get sick and I'm creating time to fail. You, you started making me feel smaller and smaller as you went down that list right now. Cause I was thinking, <laughs> man, had, to make you did feel my big. wife text you to tell me all that right now? I mean, I didn't even know you had her number, but anyway. Uh, it's so, time to wake up, man. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm aware. But sometimes <laughs> I, I feel like right now should be a sprint, uh, just because of everything going on. It is. Personally, in this my is the time to double down. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm, time I'm to sprinting. double down. We've been training for this. Yep, it's a good time for that. Time to yeah. double down. So. The next question, uh, you've obviously have certain natural abilities and I'm sure you have some other gifts that you've kind of generated and honed along the way. Uh, how do you invest right now through serving others? What does that look like in your life? You know, growing up, I always felt like um, I could sense and feel things in the world around me and in other people. And that was often described as being overly sensitive, mm. you know, soft, stuff like that. Um, and I hid it for a long time because people made fun of me for it and thought I was weird. So I just stopped making eye contact for a long time and I wore all these other masks. But eventually I realized it was my superpower and I revisited that and I started to own it and I trusted it. I, never, I stopped second guessing it. 
And so I use that to serve others. I use my personal journey, my story to serve others because I believe there's strength, great strength in vulnerability. I believe that when I choose to be vulnerable and share something deeply personal, I'm giving permission for someone else to do the same. I'm right. giving somebody else a voice. I'm giving somebody else a understanding that they're not alone in this world because until someone shares something that you relate to, then you just feel alone. You feel like you can't relate and you also feel like you can't talk about it. Right. So yeah, I'm not scared to talk about the Me Too movement and what happened to me and then. I'm not scared to talk about addiction or suicide or depression. Like absolutely not. I'm not scared to talk about faith. You know, I'll talk about things that some people don't want to hear, but other people are so thankful to hear. Right. Those are my people. That's how I serve. Okay. That's how I serve. And from a business perspective, there's another way of doing it. Okay. I serve too by keeping three spots on my coaching roster for those who can't afford it, you know, and I, I create a scholarship for them, you know, but these are people that are going to treat it like they're paying a million bucks. Right. It's very, very good. Um, actually just lost my train of thought. Good job for that. You talk to most of the people that know me and they say, Travis is speechless. You did a good job there. Heard you were uh, extremely funny too. Tell us a joke while I think. No, nothing. You got nothing for me. Did you freeze? So, man, I've got a brain injury, so I forget stuff all the time. Okay, no, I, my my connection actually did get lost. So you, you were so still that I did, I missed half that. We're good. So I'm obviously under quarantine. I might. I do appreciate how you're separated from your family right now, but. Man. There you are. Yes. Welcome As back. I was saying, my family's here and we are fighting over bandwidth like crazy. Uh, this whole, we're, we're doing the Shut it adjusting. down, man. <laughs> no, we're, we're adjusting to life. Uh, I got used to working from home, so that part doesn't bother me so much. But the fact that everybody's on Zoom meetings with teachers, they, they were... They weren't homeschool. I had three yep. kids. They weren't homeschooled before. Yep. Uh, so now we have devices going everywhere. And well, there's no school today because it's Good Friday. But guess what there is? There's Xbox and Switch and PlayStation. And two of them are actually playing with yep. each other on different devices. Everyone knows in my family, like when it's time for this, they're like, shut it down. Airplane mode, everybody. Yeah. So if I can't do this, we don't get paid. Like, there you so, go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I should and have that's why I also have Google Fiber. It helps. Yeah. I'm still green. I'm sharp enough to stick in the ground, green enough to grow, right? So there you uh, go, man. No, nah, man, you're doing it. I love it. Yeah. We're um what what I'm what I'm about right now is really trying to just get out there. There's so many people struggling and just want to bring some encouragement to them. Uh even some yeah. some tips and tricks to to do things better. I've been in uh business development marketing for 15, 20 years now. Love it. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to help some people out. There's a lot of, there's a lot of friends that I'm helping them with that. resumes right now, unfortunately. And that's, that's not the type of, um, free investing that I want to be doing. I want to say, okay, your business yeah. is here. Let's take you here. That's what I want to be doing. Yeah. But, uh, right now it's a, uh, Hey, let, yeah. let's, let's. I'm help helping them with the LinkedIn stuff and just whatever it takes right now. Indeed. Indeed. We're all in this together. So going to be respectful of your time. I know you've, uh, you, you're always yeah, keep it rolling, pretty, man. pretty gone, but um, if you wanted us to kind of take away anything or uh, to move towards something from your perspective, something that you want to put out there as a message, what would that be? You know, it goes down to the slogan I use that I created about five years ago, and that's live with a courageous heart. And what that means is it focuses on the courage it takes to live life aligned with your values and not the values that have been defined by people in your life or society. I think it takes real courage to go against that, you know, where other people have told you what success looks like, that a six figure salary will make you happy. You know, a car will make you happy. A nice house will make you happy. This job, you know, that's not always true. And so 
if you can learn how to break through that and do the things that you really, really value in life and be bold about those things and be willing for some people not to like it, to be willing for some people to say you're batshit crazy, man, you're on to something. And so if you don't know what those things are, that's what I do with people. I help them rediscover, not reinvent themselves, but rediscover who you are because there's, it's that stuff is there. You forgot about it. You buried it. So I want to re you know, I want to unearth that stuff. So if you're someone who's taken every behavioral assessment out there, Myers Briggs and insights disc and all that stuff, and you still feel like you're stuck in a box, you know, come see me and I'll rip into your soul and tell you who you are. And then we'll really get some stuff done. That's, that's great. For those who uh, do, you, do you have a tip or a trick to help people start that journey on their own? Yeah. Um, you know, one thing, if you want to find out how brilliant you are, do my, th you know, do a three minute drill. I call it, you know, take three minutes, start your phone, your clock, but write this down. It's, there's something powerful about handwriting. Um, and I want you to write down every word and phrase that speaks to what you stand for value and believe in. Mm. And it's not professionally, just professionally. It's also personally. I don't care if it makes sense to you either. Write it down if it shows up. And it has to be things that you stand for value and believe in, not what you think other people would want you to stand for value and believe in. That defeats right. the whole damn purpose. But just start writing. Don't censor anything. Don't cross anything out. Just write the damn thing and then take a look at that, save it, and then ask three to four other people to do the same thing for you. But you do yours first. I don't want anyone else's stuff to influence what you write. Right. People do not like talking about themselves. So do that and then start looking at the trends. Start seeing what words were repeated and then what words fit into a similar bucket and see what surprises you. You know, those are the things that I like to call your personal SEO. You know, those are your buzzwords and they're going to help you start learning how to tell your story about how, who you are and how brilliant you are and mm. how to own those things. Because if you can't speak about your gifts, man, what? there's one thing to be humble. There's another thing to be small. Mm. And being small is being insecure about your gifts and not talking about them so that way you don't make other people feel uncomfortable, you know? I don't want to brag. I'm like, there's nothing bragging about you sharing your gift with this world. You think you were given a gift so you could hide it? Like you were given a gift because other people don't have it and they need you to help them just like they have a gift and you need that gift. We're, <laughs> our life purpose in this world has nothing to do with us. It has to do with how we're going to serve others. Mm. So if you keep that to yourself, you're also saying, I don't want to serve other people, mm. you know, unintentionally. So um, I highly recommend that. But that three-minute drill is a really good start. And then the next thing that we do is we start thinking about what does your limiting belief sound like? What does that voice sound like? You know, it's usually if you, if you listen to yourself, your limiting belief likes to finish your sentences. You know, when you start saying like, you know what? Like, I'd love to go back to school and study this, like, this program. Then that voice shows up and says, but... And then if finished, might be losing you again. But it's okay. You know, you know. You know, you get a lot of spirits. Man, something so powerful overcame this thing, and then they they fend off with where's me? Is that? <laughs> where are you? I'm I'm here. I hear you. Hello. Sorry, commercial interruption. Brought to you by my friends at Comcast. No problem. <laughs> okay, so you, what I heard you say last was that limiting voice inside them that says, but, and then. I'll see you, but that's fine, whatever you, whatever you need. My connection's unstable, so you know what? I don't wanna waste your time. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Can you wrap it up. Go ahead.
You, what? Yeah. No, I'm just messing with you. Okay. <laughs> I'm not frozen. Uh, Got to have some fun with it, right? All right, hey, dude. You know what? I know. I, I just want you to know you're doing an amazing job, and I'm really grateful for you. And I'm oh, really sure. grateful for that that you're doing this, and mm. you're all in. You're working through a ton of stuff right now, just like the rest of us. So the last thing I ever want you to do is get frustrated at your damn computer um, and feel bad about it or just start telling yourself a story that you're wasting my time. Um, I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful for you. And I really want to see you succeed in life. And you're going to. Believe me, when I was in Maine like last year on my journey, all I had was DSL. and It was the worst shit ever. And so I went through this every single time. Understand. I totally get it. So, so we grew up I'm with. with you, man. Yeah, I'm grateful for you, man. I appreciate that. No, I was just going to say that your uh, your three minute drill is very similar to something I do with when I do branding workshops with uh, with nice. businesses. Uh, I That's I awesome. just say, okay, I, I'm going to give everybody some post it notes and some and some sharpies. I want you to think of yeah. the values that you have as a company. I want to think. Of, I want you to think about the differentiators that make you better than your uh, competition, or just things that you do extremely mm -hmm. well. Let's just capture that. Yeah. And then what we do is we start seeing what actually fits together in categories and we turn those into the pillars yeah. of their brand. And then we go on through oh, this rest it. of this, this uh, journey basically together. But yeah, that three minute drill, that's, that's a great place to start. I second that notion hundred percent. I, I don't typically awesome, think man. of it from a, a person perspective because I was in the yeah. B2B so long, but yeah, it's great idea, yeah, man. It's something I've been trying to do this week, but uh, <laughs> I haven't got down to. Uh, You'll find a way. I will. I will indeed. It's it's on my to-do list. I have three to-do lists. One of them is the absolutely have to get done and the should get done and the it's okay. Just do what you can. <laughs> Just pick the one thing you think about every time that's driving you nuts. Yeah. Well, Tackle that baby. Somebody with ADHD and OCD like me, that's easy. I have rage ADHD else. and I have a brain injury. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Had a few concussions. Totally get it. Too. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for being here. And uh, we're, we're going to definitely put some uh, plugs for you down here. Okay. And we'll, we'll get you out there and hopefully we can help some people in this mess. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Just uh, shoot me a note when this thing goes live. I'll help you out. Anything yeah. you ever need, I got your back, man. I uh, appreciate that. Just appreciate reach that. out. Ask yeah. for what you need. Okay? Yes, Take sir. Care, brother. Yeah, you too.